walls of brick and beams of steel Give us hope and hold our memories Okay, first I'd like to comment on the audacity of the board to send that letter home with my child. You didn't tell your teachers. Mr. Davis claimed he was part of our family and that's how you treat your family. You don't even tell your teachers. You send a letter home at the end of the day when you guys cannot be contacted. And secondly, Mr. Ford, at election time, you stood in our church at Mount Zion and said that you would stand for our, us parents and you would work for us. Remember that when you place your vote tonight. Secondly, the program that they're boasting about at Mar Morris River Park, Grand River is a literacy program. They recommend, that's, that's one of their, their magnet focuses, but the Lansing School District lets these magnet schools open up, and then when the federal money is gone, you guys can't support us. You give us false hope that we can attend a school and we can get what we chose, and then you can't support us. You leave us hanging in the dust. Where were you when the money ran out then, them years ago when I chose to send my child? And for the comment about where the parents were, we are a poor neighborhood, and both our parents have to work every day of the week, all day. What might be best for my pocketbook is not best for my family. So when you place your vote over a financial decision tonight, remember that, you know what, it may be best for me to work 24 hours a day to support my family, but it's not best for my family, so it should not be a financial decision. You need to cut your cost on your clothing allowance, your car allowance, and how much money you guys make. Let's give something back to our community. I do my job because I care, not because it pays a lot. Maybe you guys should look at your position and think twice before you take another one. Good evening, my name is Chris Laddie. I'm an instructor at Central Michigan University, a Lansing resident and a proud parent of a kindergarten student at Morris Park. I'm here to encourage you to keep an open mind with tonight's vote. Uh, I would tell you uh, how proud I am of this program and the opportunities it has afforded my daughter in terms of developing your literacy. I'll let other parents speak to that. I do want to take this time to express my disgust with the process that's unfolded for the past month plus. In the issue of transparency, I want to let you know that I'm trying desperately to convince my wife to have our daughter leave the district next year, and not as a threat to get you to vote a certain way, just because I want to model transparency. I've been uh, disappointed with the amount of secrecy, the amount of double talk, and my perception of miscommunication, whether it was intentional or otherwise. I hope that you have an open mind tonight, that you're not foreclosed and wasting our time with this decision. I think Morse Park offers a unique opportunity for many students and for those of you that would, are still thinking openly about tonight's vote, think of my daughter, think of her peers, think of the Morse Park community, the Lansing School District. For those of you that are voting members that live in Lansing, think about this opportunity that it affords our youth that maybe they would not receive in other, uh, other schools because of the unique attention that they are given and how Morris Park can create such a unique ecology of learning by bringing disparate abilities together in a unique way that blunts together opportunities for maximal growth. I'm not envious of your decision tonight with the fiscal straits our district is in. Please keep an open mind. Please consider this. And good luck, good night, and possibly farewell as a parent in the district. Yes, my name is John Mitchell. I've been a volunteer and substitute teacher and have taught in school districts in four or five different states since 1979. And I'm here to support Grand River. Uh, regardless of what the young lady said earlier about the staff, I totally disagree. I've uh, worked with staffs in Philadelphia, New Jersey, Baltimore, Lansing, Louisville, Kentucky. That is one of the hardest working, most conscientious staffs I've ever <laughs> been associated with. Those teachers, I mean, I've, had, I've done long-term subpositions there, and those teachers, they go all out. I mean, that would be a travesty if that school is closed. I mean, that community really needs Grand River Elementary. Thank you. Thank you.
Good evening. Um, since the CAPFERS report was being presented today, I'd assume that there would be a stack of them there for everybody to be able to look at, yet there don't appear to be any around. I was able to ferret one out, and I was looking through it quickly, and there's a couple things that came to my attention. In Section 1.5, the district is proposing a 90% attendance policy. I think the teachers would love it. That's an increase in the number of days that you're proposing that they could be absent. And since I've only used three of my seven sick days this year, you want to give me more? That sounds great. Um, in what, Section 1.14, proposing the, creating the ninth grade academies. Everett, for the last several years, has had the ninth grade teams, which in essence has been kind of a ninth grade academy, where teachers work with groups of students in teams to be able to work with the ninth graders in transition. Those are being eliminated this year. And we've been told that there are no more ninth grade teams next year. Yet, the CAPERS is recommending ninth grade academies. So why are we eliminating the ninth grade teams when in a year or so from now or whenever we're going to be putting in ninth grade academies? Doesn't make any sense. Um, Section 3.5 is talking about going to, to philanthropic funds. I think that's a great idea. Unfortunately, this district does not have a very good reputation with at least a couple people that I've talked to. One, Dominic provided pizzas for one of the meetings. He was never thanked or heard one word from the administration about the effort that he put in to do that. Another gentleman from another foundation contacted me about interest in setting up something to work with Everett High School. He said he's tried to reach with the administration and has given up work trying to deal with the Lansing administration, and he wants to deal with individual teachers. Talking about transparency in the CATFERS, if this has been a public process and it was supposed to be transparent, why all of a sudden, just as it's about to come to a close, we find out that the district has, administration has an internal process for determining schools that are to be closed. I thought that was the whole idea of the right sizing, that the CAPFERS was going to make those recommendations to the administration, yet the administration has gone on, I don't want to say behind the doors, but internally to decide what schools are going to get closed doesn't make sense. If there's going to be cap first and it's going to be public and it's going to be transparent, that's where it should be come from. The next speaker is Miss. Let's close down the old and go with the new. I love my school. How about you?